This technical lab will deal with the issue of formatting in the context of Microsoft Word. To begin with, we will discuss the context and relevance of formatting in the scope of the research documentation and referencing. Thereafter, a Microsoft Word tutorial will be provided. The session will round off with a summary. This technical lab on formatting can be contextualized in the course Academic Research and Writing in the scope of Rules and Tools of Research. Research rules deal with formalized standards and rules for documentation and referencing. Research tools deal with technical aspects, which we will discuss in the Microsoft Word tutorial. This technical lab deals with quantitative completeness with respect to the presence of all required elements of a research paper, as well as the compliance with formal rules and standards. As an outcome of this technical lab, you would be expected to apply and indeed comply with the rules and norms of formatting of documentation and referencing from a technical perspective. Furthermore, you will be expected to understand the key aspects of formatting in Microsoft Word. Lastly, you'll be capable of creating and finalizing a Microsoft Word file as a template for a term paper or thesis. The cover page features relevant information pertaining to the research output as well as to your person. This includes the purpose of the research output, such as a term paper or a bachelor thesis, the title of the thesis or paper, the name of the institution, the faculty and department, your first name and surname, the date and place of birth, your matriculation number, address, telephone, and email, the date of submission, name of degree program, the course title, the name of the instructor, and the semester term. Compliant with legal statutes, only your official institutional or university email address is to be provided. The design elements should be a plain design with black font, white paper, no distracting pictures or design elements, and no company logos. Institutional logos are to be included at the top of the cover page in a modest and non-distracting size. The pagination or page numbering is as follows. Roman numerals for admins and directories. Arabic numerals for the main body. Arabic or Roman numerals for the annex. The page numbers are to be positioned at the center top, applying the following format. Extended dash, space, page number, space, extended dash. The cover page is the first page, but the number is not printed on the page. The first page after the cover page, usually the abstract, starts with Roman numeral 2. To apply the page numbering, make sure a header and footer is in place. You can click Insert, and then Header, and insert a blank header. As we discussed, the first page, namely the cover page, will not include the page number, so you want a different first page. The first page will be blank, and the second page header will in fact have text. As we discussed, the front matter will be numbered with Roman numerals. Instead of having a text, what we want to do is include a page number. So you delete that text and insert a page number under Design, which is a menu that opens up when you're editing the header and footer, and you want to include a page number at the top of the page. We will select plain number 2, now, as discussed, this should be in Roman numerals, so we need to format this further. So you click on Page Number and Format Page Numbers, and we will select Roman numerals in capital. Now we have Roman numerals starting on the second page in the front matter. In order to add in extended dashes, you need to insert a special symbol. You click on Insert, Symbol, 
and an extended dash. You can also find this dash in the character map on your computer. We will include yet another extended dash thereafter. Now, uh, the page numbers will be automatic. So within our directory section, if we go to the next page, we will have Roman numeral 3. However, as you can see here, this is the beginning of our main body, and we want Arabic numerals. Therefore, we need to create a new section. Here, at this point, we will include a new section. Now, this is not a page break as such, uh, but rather you need to go to Layout, Breaks, and you need to insert a new page, or next page, but as you can see here, uh, it has a different coloring. So it, in fact, inserts a section break and starts the new section on the next page. As you can see here, uh, we no longer have the page number here, uh, as this is a new section and we have not applied a format here as of yet. Uh, but our Roman numerals in the directories remain intact. Uh, so now we do the same. We apply a page number at the top of the page uh, in the center. Uh, as of right now, it's Roman numeral. We want to change that to Arabic. Uh, as you can see here, we have Arabic, uh, and we will insert the symbol of an extended dash, uh, which is longer than a typical minus sign. Uh, but now we have the issue that, uh, as prescribed by our examination regulations, we need to begin with page number uh, Arabic page number one. Uh, and so we go back into format, format page numbers. Uh, and we will simply change that to start at 1 under the section page numbering. And so now, uh, throughout our work, this will continually uh, number the pages, um, starting with Roman 1, uh, Arabic 1, uh, at the main body, and continually number on through. We have uh, reached our annex here, uh, and we now have the option of continuing with our Arabic numerals, or if we wish, we can uh, simply change that to Roman numerals uh, within the, uh, the format. Uh, and so you would simply um, change that to Roman numerals, um, but you may need to insert a new section break uh, right above. So uh, if we were to do that, let's insert that new section break under Layout, Breaks, Section Breaks, Next Break. Here it begins anew uh, with Arabic 1. We will change that to Roman. Uh, and we will simply start at, uh, we will continue from the previous section. So it continues effectively from, uh, from the number one in main body. If we were to have more pages in the main body, it would continue uh, with the last page of the main body. In this case, I added five pages to the main body, or in fact six pages, uh, and the annex now begins on Roman 7. The following custom margins can be applied. A margin of 2.5 cm at the top, 2 cm at the bottom, 3 cm to the left, and 2 cm to the right. In order to apply margins as we set out in our regulation, you simply select Layout, uh, the Margins button, and you customize the margins. Uh, you may need to enter them in Imperial or Metric, uh, depending on the version of Microsoft Word you're using. Generally, a grotesque font such as Arial is prescribed. Some institutions prefer a serif, like Times New Roman. The formatting of texts and paragraphs. The main body text is to be formatted in grouped, justified style, font size 12 with a line spacing of 1.5. The spacing above and below the paragraph should be 3 point. Headlines are to be of a bold typeface, with a font size of 12, left aligned. Paragraph spacing between a headline and a paragraph of 12 point above and 6 point below, while a headline spacing between two headlines would be a 6 point above and below spacing. The title of the work is to be of a bold typeface and center aligned. Let us now move on to font and headlines. In this case, we'll be applying an Arial font. Uh, some institutions do prefer Times New Roman. Uh, as you can see here, we have selected uh, an Arial font. 
the text is intended to be 12 point font uh, with a spacing of 1.5. Uh, the spacing can be modified here under this button uh, where you would modify it to 1.5. As you can see that made a, uh, a change to our spacing. Uh, 1.0 would look like this as the lines are much closer together. Furthermore, it should be in a grouped or justified style. Uh, for that, you need to select uh, this button, uh, which justifies the text. Justify uh, distributes your text evenly between the margins, uh, gives your document a clean, crisp edges so it looks more polished. The spacing above and below paragraphs is intended to be three point above and below. For this, you go to the same tab as the line spacing, and you adjust the line spacing options, and uh, you would imply three point spacing above and apply three point spacing below with a line spacing of 1.5 as we just determined. This has an impact on the next paragraph in the sense that the spacing between these paragraphs will be three point as we just indicated. Now let's apply this to our general styles. As you can see here, these are the styles of uh, our document. We need to make these consistent and conform with our rules and regulations. In this case, we just formatted the normal text. So let's make sure that that in fact applies. Uh, so we modify that um, to uh, reflect what we just did. So we have Arial uh, size 12. We didn't apply any kind of typeface. Um, then when it comes to spacing, we need to make an adjustment uh, which occurs in format and we're going to work on first of all the paragraph itself and we have the same view so what we want are 1.5 lines, 3 point spacing and, four, and, th and 3 point spacing as well after uh, that reflects effectively what we just did and we want justified text okay so now let's go back to the document uh, now, whenever we have a text uh, that may not uh, be in conformity with what we uh, just determined, when we apply uh, normal font to it, it will in fact conform with it. Now, we need to do this for our headlines as well. Um, so, as you can see here, the headlines are intended to be in bold typeface, a font size of 12, left aligned, paragraph spacing, and so on and so forth. So, let's apply that. So let's assume this chapter is 2.3 and it's entitled Process. Uh, we need a bold typeface. What we can do is simply apply this immediately uh, as heading 1. Modify. What we need is Arial, size 12, bold typeface. It has to be left aligned. Uh, the paragraph spacing uh, between a headline and a paragraph will be 12 point above and 6 point below. Uh, so let's apply that and I'll explain what that exactly means. Uh, so a spacing of 12 above and a spacing of 6 below. Uh, there's no need for line spacing. And so effectively, um, we'll apply that. There we go. And it looks like it's a it's blue, so we change that to black. And so effectively when the headline is above a text, or this paragraph as we see here, uh, the spacing is 12 point above and 6 point below. Uh, let's assume there are maybe two headlines, uh, as we see here. So we have two headlines next to each other, as you see here. Chapter 2, Portfolio Management, and 2.1, Definition. Please note that there is no intermediate text between the two you need to apply a bit of a different headline um, because effectively you have 12 point spacing above both and the rules call for 6 point spacing above and below these two headlines. So I preformatted this here and it would look effectively like this. Uh, the modification looks as such. Within the format, uh, the spacing above and below is 6 point font with all other parameters in place. It is essential for you to format uh, headlines or headings uh, with the styles tabs uh, because this will become of very important use later on when we create an automatic outline. 
The decadal numbering system is to be applied in the outline. Sometimes alphanumerical numbering systems are not allowed by examination regulations. There should be no unnumbered text and no full stop after the last decadal cipher. If you divide a chapter, there have to be at least two subchapters. The formatting of the outline. The headers of the main body and subchapters with individual pages should be provided. We will now move on to generating an automatically updating outline. As you can see here, we have uh, inserted all of the chapter headings and subchapters as well as sub subchapters and formatted them respectively with uh, heading one and heading two as we determined previously. Um, as you can see here, both of these have uh, heading two applied to them uh, as we want a spacing of six point between them. Um, and when there is a single heading, you want a spacing of 12 above it to separate it from the paragraph above. So there's no individual space here as a line, it's just the 12 point spacing. Now all of these are formatted as headers. You see these little arrows that show up next to them. Uh, I'll show you effectively what that kind of means in a little bit. Um, when I click the arrow, it, it changes as if it's, if it's closing some sort of uh, subordinate chapters, and we'll, we'll make them subordinate in a minute. Uh, but first, we're going to enter in a, um, an outline in our admins, or in our directories, I mean, in our directory. So what we want is, uh, within references, to in enter a new table of contents. You select the table of contents. Uh, we can work with the first one. It's not a problem. And because I, in fact, uh, formatted these as headers, we actually have all of the headers um, applied already, although some of them have uh, some formatting issues that we need to discuss together. Um, let's say one of the chapters was, in fact, not formatted as a header, uh, but rather formatted as normal text. If this were updated, so that was the course of investigation, if this were updated, uh, that would not be included. Uh, that's why you have to format all of your headers, not simply by bolding them and making them size 12, but really um, making them headings. Um, and as you just witnessed, you can update, update the table, either the page numbers or the whole table. And uh, as you work on your text and the page numbers change, you simply just have to update the table rather than manually changing the page numbers. Uh, now, as you can see here, the, uh, the subordination is not quite there. That's why we need to go to View and open our nav navigation pane. Now, our introduction should be at the highest level, and uh, the research problem uh, course of investigation uh, should be demoted and made subordinate to introduction. Uh, the same goes for portfolio management. It's our main chapter, so that ha that's why it is the highest level. Uh, and 2.2, I mean 2.3, in fact, has a subchapter. Now here, only one subchapter sub showed up, 2.3.1. Now we, of course, do not want that to be the case. Um, and so we have to take a look at what the issue is. So here it appears that uh, there's a bit of an issue with the heading, that we need to format a third heading. And so we'll simply apply that format as 12 Arial, uh, and we want effectively uh, a spacing of six point above and below. Uh, with a single spacing. Okay, and we want to apply that same uh, format to our second subchapter, uh, Analytics, which I just noticed is in fact here, but what all you would have to do is uh, copy the format over to it. And in that sense, uh, it is now subordinate. Our third main chapter uh, should be at the highest level uh, with the subordinate chapters, and same goes for chapter four. Um, the summary, critical acclaim, and outlook are subordinate to the outlook. And now if we go back to our table of contents, we can update that, the entire table, and now we have the different subordinations. So if we were to uh, add an additional list, uh, such as a list of abbreviations, with the heading, and we were to update that, uh, we would have a new list of abbreviations, which we can then promote to the same level. 
Uh, as for the outline, if we want the page number in the outline, we simply make the outline, in fact, uh, its, its own header. Uh, update. And then we can simply remove so that we don't have a further redundancy. So in this sense, we have the outline as the header of the page itself, and then here is the outline as such. Uh, the same goes for your back matter. Uh, you would simply add in the Roman numeral um, back matter headings, and it would be updated within the outline itself. There are some added features in programming an outline, namely that um, when you export it as a PDF, all of these headings become hyperlinks and it'll jump to that page. Uh, within Microsoft Word, you simply click Control and then you can click on the link and it'll jump to uh, the respective subchapter. Uh, the same applies within the navigation pane. You can jump uh, back and forth between uh, these various uh, sections. Within the navigation pane you can also simplify your view by closing some of those uh, some of those subchapters and the same actually applies uh, within your work. You can effectively close all your subchapters if you kind of uh, want to work in a more tidy way um, by just closing those subchapters and then reopening them prior to your export. The list of abbreviations is sorted alphabetically. It is a list of commonly used abbreviations in the field of study in which you are researching. These abbreviations were introduced in the body of the text. No commonly known or self-made abbreviations may be applied. The headlines, or sometimes referred to as the captions, of figures and tables are labeled as Fig 1, Fig 2, and so on with their individual page numbers and only the headlines without sources within the list of figures and within the list of tables labeled as tab 1, tab 2, and so forth with their individual page numbers and only headlines and no sources. The captions are of a bold typeface, font size 12, left aligned, positioned above the graphics and tables within the work. The source of the graphic or table is font size 10. Formatted in grouped style, single line spacing, left aligned, positioned below the graphics and tables. In order to work with a list of abbreviations, you need to enter a new table into the Word document with two columns and the ability to enter further um, rows. Uh, you enter your abbreviations and explanations. In this case, these are just random explanations and abbreviations from the United Nations website. Uh, and we will sort these alphabetically. So you click on your table, go to Table Tools, Layout, and Sort. You want to sort the table by the abbreviation column in an ascending manner. In this case, the abbreviations are now sorted. Uh, from C to O. And now uh, the next step would be to simply remove the black edges of the border. Uh, in this case you go to the design tools within the table tools and you select no border. And now you effectively have a list of abbreviations. You can continually um, add on to this list of abbreviations by adding rows below fill out the rows and then sort again uh, at the end prior to export. When it comes to a list of figures and a list of tables, there are slightly different procedures that are re required. Uh, so let's work with a list of figures. And for this we effectively need a figure. So uh, let's assume that on the next page of our work we have a figure. figure one, process. Now we do not format this as a heading, but we insert a new caption. In order to add a caption, you go to References, Insert Caption, and you select the label of fig or figure and uh, rename your figure as process. Uh, if the label doesn't exist, you simply select Add New Label. OK. Um, so we can remove one of those. I know that the format applied nonetheless. 
and then what we want to do is effectively change this this format so here our caption is not conform with our regulations uh, which require Arial, uh, if I remember correctly, size 12, bold, and automatic, uh, and not italic. Let's double check here. Uh, so bold typeface, font size 12, left aligned, position above the graphics and tables. Uh, and now that we have formatted this, as, in fact, as a caption, uh, we can add a list of figures. So we go back to references, uh, insert a table of figures. So we insert everything with a caption of fig from our template, uh, all things here can just remain the same. And now we have our first figure process uh, on page Roman 7. Of course it would end up being Arabic because that's a component of your main body. With respect to graphics, SmartArt is a preset in Microsoft Office and it aids in visually communicating information. These graphics range from graphical lists and process diagrams to more complex graphics. You should generate your own graphics. Graphic design or processing software is recommendable. It is easier to create graphics in Microsoft PowerPoint than in Microsoft Word. See the poster lab slash resource video for more information. Scans or screenshots of graphical elements generated by other authors are not acceptable. Graphics must be generated by the author of the work and must indicate their sources. In that regard, the source of a... In that regard, referencing consists of the following source, author's own drawing based on, and the citations. Headlines, sources, and the graphic itself are left aligned. One may opt to use open source images within a graphic, so long as the respective attribution is provided. There is no citation of non-academic internet sources, newspapers, news magazines, and introductory textbooks. The method is prescribed by the institution usually author, date, and page method, according to the requirements of the institution, such as APA or Harvard style. The list of references is unstructured, in alphabetical order, with a font size of 10, single line spacing, left aligned, paragraph spacing of three point. Please take note of the fundamental nature of such requirements. The breach of rules might lead to failure. We will now discuss referencing and citations. Let us assume that this first sentence is an indirect citation from a different source. What we do is we go to References and we want to insert a citation and we add a new citation. Under the Type of Source drop-down menu you can select from a wide variety of reference types. Um, this effectively allows you to have different input fields for a website. This would include a URL. And for a journal article, it could include the volume or issue. Now, you fill out these fields uh, as fully as you possibly can based on the information that you have provided. And as you can see here, we now have the citation, Decker 2011. Based on your regulations, you may need to switch between citation styles, such as APA, and the modifications will be done for you automatically. I'll show you that later on in the bibliography with a list of references. Now, uh, you're also required to include a page number. So you select the citation, drop down menu, you edit the citation, and include the page number. In this case, let's just do page 35. Uh, now, this citation is now programmed. You can also convert it to static text if you, if you need to edit it in some way or include multiple citations. In order to include a list of references, you simply go to the References tab, you select Bibliography, you add your bibliography or your list of references respectively. Uh, it's not necessary to include the actual title of references, as you have that above. And here we have the source that we included earlier. If we were to switch this to Harvard style, the format would change automatically. As you add more references in your work, as you add more citations in your work, the references can be updated automatically by selecting Update Citations and Bibliography, and the references will show up respectively. The glossary listing and explaining terms is ordered in alphabetical order. Specific terminology, technical terms, and the jargon of a sector or industry are to be included. 
no common knowledge terms are to be included in the glossary. A limit of an explanation to two to four sentences should be kept. The minimum length of a glossary is one full page. In this technical lab, we indicated that the effective formatting of a work puts it in compliance with rules, norms, and standards of research documentation and referencing. Certain technical aspects of formatting need to be considered, and when applied, they allow for an automated template. Word processing software such as Microsoft Word supports research documentation and has features related to pagination, layout, margins, headlines, and referencing.